Uh, my name's Joel. Uh, I'm going to do uh, basically a roundup of news that is in the Ruby community and probably potentially uh, pertinent to you. A lot of P's in that sentence. So without further ado, uh, so the way this works, if you actually <laughs> do the presentation, is uh, you'll find a news article and then you'll do a Google image, Bing image, whatever search, and you go with the first thing you find. So this one's pretty easy, right? Uh, probably everyone's heard that Matt's joined Heroku. Um, there's actually a translated article about why he did it that he wrote, which I ran across somewhere, probably read it, but uh, kind of interesting, like, basically he's going to go get paid to make Ruby not suck. Ooh. So that'll be like two people getting paid to not make it suck. Aaron Patterson's also on that, on that train. So that's cool. Uh, oh my god, I don't remember what this is anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I get it. I have no idea. The image was like one, like 80 by 80 and I blew it up to full screen size. So <laughs> right. It's high quality, right? Uh, so this, this I got by googling why the fuck isn't Rails 3 going out. <laughs> this, is, this is the first result. Um, and I didn't get a, a good answer. But I did look at the dates and stuff, so this month Rails 3.1 RC4 came out, and on that page about it, it said it would be two weeks before the next one came out. That's not out yet. So that was Plus cool. no update at all. Yeah, right. Nothing. I don't know. I looked at the, the tickets on there. It looked like stuff was so messed up with sprockets, but... Yeah, it's, it's a big mess. Not surprising that it's not out. I'm so glad I started. This is the guy that's responsible for it not being out. I'm going to blame him, even though <laughs> there are like other Rails, but it's him. This is Aaron Patters Patterson, uh, also a tender love, if you've heard him. He has a great RailsConf speech, which everyone should watch. It's called uh, Double Unicorn Rainbow Hands or something like that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but he got the entire Rails core team to dance on stage at RailsConf. It's great. Um, anyway, so this was Rails 309 was released this month. That's what this picture is about. <laughs> uh, oh, I also forgot, like... Uh, if you guys can guess the image, then then there's no prize, but you'll get street cred. So. <laughs> yeah, the points don't matter. Yeah, exactly. Ruby Gems 1.8 something. It's not, but that's Ruby 193. No, uh, this is what you get if you Google for Ruby patches. You get this. Um, I ran across a couple things this month that have been in active development. One is a GitHub project called Ruby Patches, and the other one is called Ruby Backports. And both of these are things that you can basically add via RVM or some other patching mechanism to fix whatever version of Ruby you're using. If you're using 187, then you can backport 192 changes into Ruby 187 with the backports thing. And uh, the patches program has some cool stuff in it, like it has the uh, require patch for 192. So it's just a couple of repos, um, and after after all this, I'll give someone the keynote so you guys can see stuff, and I'll probably make a blog post about it. So all these links will be in that. There's also well, we'll get to that. Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> Who remembers? Anyone know? Hold on. Uh, I got it now. <laughs> okay. This is Cucumber. One One Dot O was released. Pretty cool. <laughs> Cucumber's been a thing for like five years now or something, so that's cool. Uh, anybody? Yeah, okay. This is Firefox 5 is released this month. <laughs> this is the image. Cupcakes. Uh, iTerm 2, 1 0, released this month. A lot of big releases this month. That's pretty cool. Why do you get updated? Why do you get updated, which is a miracle? Anybody got this one? I bet you don't, because it doesn't make any contextual <laughs> sense. Uh, this one is dot .cloud released. They went into production this month. Uh, it's another Heroku-style hosting uh, infrastructure as a service kind of deal. Uh, their shtick is they do multi-platform, more platforms than, uh, than Heroku does. I think they do like net stuff, too. So pretty cool. They're new. new Does ish. everybody use that? I haven't actually used it, but if you were signed up for their beta, uh, then when they went like full on live, they gave you a year for free of their pro account. And I still haven't used it, but I totally signed up for it. 
like I might use this someday. You have 15 days left, man. <laughs> Uh, they have they have interesting stuff like Heroku, as you probably know, it's extremely abstracted out. Like they give you a console and stuff, but it's not really a console; it's some kind of fake thing. So Doc Cloud actually uses Chef and Puppet, I think, in the background, but you actually get to write the scripts. So they do. They have a bunch of basically formulas that you can get from their documentation, but it's a lot more closer to the. It's a lot closer to the metal than Heroku is. Heroku is really very far from the metal. Um, Anyway, pretty cool. Uh, check them out. They're in open beta now, or are they actually Looks going? Like they take your money. I think they're yeah. Yeah. Okay, they'll take your money. Awesome. <laughs> uh, any guesses as to what this is? No, I wouldn't. Lundy startups. Tech Hunt redesign. So, is it Lundy startups? Yeah, that's, what I was thinking. <laughs> that's a great guess based on the image. But this is actually what I got when I typed in indie tech scene. Oh. <laughs> I mean that makes sense, right? London comes up. Yeah. Uh, so That's sad. That makes me sad. <laughs> so I blame you because you you should have the most SEO value. On, Clearly, on indie hackers is and not SEO. Yeah, you need to put some SEO on that. Rub it all over it. Um, <laughs> well, actually, you just need images. That would right. help. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. This is true. Uh, so Miles and Brennan Wright was involved. Yeah, and uh, Chris Selenak. Yeah, Christy was involved. Uh, they started a, a gist, and then there was a blog post about it. But basically, it was talking about uh, indie as a tech center and how to make that better, and how to sell it to people, and how to get people to move here and give everyone money. So, pretty interesting stuff. There's, I know of two links. There might be more running around. Dean, um, yeah. You want to talk about it at all? Basically, um, it sort of arose from Brennan Knotts. Um, is I guess a, uh, an entrepreneur, I guess is probably what you prefer to be called, I don't know, uh, from Indianapolis, and uh, he was really involved in the local startup scene and whatnot, and tech scene, and then got an offer that he couldn't refuse, basically moved to New York, and then while in New York started discovering some of the, I guess, uh, things of the tech scene in New York, and uh, was tweeting about gosh, Indianapolis should be doing this, and, and Indianapolis should be doing that, and um, Chris Zelenak, uh wouldn't quite say took offense, but sort of had an issue with some of the things Brandon was saying, so wrote a, a, a fairly lengthy uh, uh, post of sorts addressing them, and then there's some back and forth, and basically um, we discussed needing a site similar to what New York has, which is at adoptahacker.com, where the site you, you go to the site and you can see why you should move to New York if you're a developer, and then you can also um, request to be quote unquote adopted. And you tell them when you're going to be visiting New York, um, you know what you do essentially, what your point in visiting New York is, and someone will will if not show you the city and tell you and show you some of the tech scene stuff or whatever, they may also give you a couch or a bed to sleep on. Um, so we discussed something along those lines to help the local community basically. Do you hook any DevTown people? They've got that great giant big space now. They could fill that with like hotel rooms. Yes, <laughs> that's true. They could at least hotel, get hotel houses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe they'll call them Well, maybe if you take four of those houses, houses, you can trade them in for one hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be awesome. They could play real size Monopoly in that, that warehouse. That would be great. Okay, so. With an electric motor on it, so you can drive it around in the <laughs> Some of them did that at some point, actually. Yes. <clears throat> I think some of them had that at their old location. I don't know what they're planning to do. Um, okay, I'm going to move on unless anyone has any just, like suggestions or anything about how to make any tech scene more awesome. SEO sounds like a first step. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and pictures. Um, Google Gears? APIs. Um, what is it? APIs. Um, so for some reason, the amount of talk about APIs has been really high for the past like month and a half. Hacker News, Reddit programming, like all these places are just really high. So there was there are a couple of really good articles. I couldn't find one of them. I looked for like half an hour, which was a big waste of time. But um, it was basically saying that everyone who's ever written an API is stupid. And I was like, yeah, 
I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but he was basically talking about using the HTTP protocol as your API, like versioning and all the other stuff you have to do in an API eventually um, system. So that was an interesting one. There was also a build a platform API, which you put on the NDRB subreddit, I think. But there's some, I have some links to some specific stuff. Uh, Rabble has been being talked about by several people with you know, some weight behind their names, um, which I'm going to present about later, so that'll be fun. Anyway. Google Plus. Yeah, everyone knows this. This is not a secret. Um, this one's easy too. Couchbase. Couchbase. Uh, if you don't know about Couchbase, they just did a new version, like production ready version of Membase last month, I think. Uh, Couchbase is basically CouchDB, Memcache, and some other thing all mashed together in an easy to install uh, package. And in theory, it does replication, auto replication, auto sharding of all of those things for you. So you just feed it uh, <coughs> IPs or DNS entries, and then you've got memcache, couchdb, et cetera, sharded and, and everything. So it's cool technology. Um, I haven't actually used it because I heard about it two days ago, but I'm gonna try it on something and probably burn myself, so. <laughs> okay, this was actually the patches one. I don't know what that other one was. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this one I am guessing no one will get. This is a uh, this is what I got when I looked up Sprite something. There's some sort of like new Sprite thing that fits into the Rails 3.1 uh, asset pipeline, and basically we'll take all of the images in your image asset folder and make sprites out of them in CSS automatically. And it's brand new. Uh, it's called Sprite Factory, and this is the image you get. I'm now going to go find that thing. Oh, uh, this was the what is happening to Rails post. You probably saw it if you read any of the Ruby news. But some dude was like, oh my god, Rails is hard. Oh, I have to learn things. Yeah, he was a whiner. Several people responded with, shut up, Weiner. That was pretty good. <laughs> so it was an interesting article. The responses were also interesting. Um, I'll leave it at that. OK, um, we have a subreddit for NDRB. If you have any local news about Ruby or startups or technology in general, great place to put them. Because then next month, people talk about them at the thing. And now it's discussion time. If anyone wants like more information that I might provide or wants to discuss some of that stuff, it's a good time. So sign up for Reddit, submit articles. Do it. Kitties. <laughs> no discussion. Sorry. Alright. Well, I'm done for now. Thanks guys.